Hello everyone. This video will go through the story of Yakuza Kiwami 2. In February 2006, after Yukio Terada is inducted as the Dojo Clan's fifth chairman, he gathers for a meeting at the Dojo Clan headquarters to announce his reformation plan. Two new patriarchs, Uematsu and Ibuchi, have risen quickly due to their huge profit coming from shady business, which angers some old patriarchs a lot. Terada and Ibuchi both support Uematsu to be the next clan captain for his leading position in family profit. Goro Majima suddenly threats him and straight they sitting down in a clan captain's seat, letting his men drag a wheelbarrow full of cash into the room. Majima claims that this money comes from his recent land business in Kamurocho, and according to Terada's reformation plan, the next captain should be him. However, Terada adjourns the meeting. Then Majima goes back to his family office in Kamurocho, finding his men lying injured on the ground. Believing it's Uematsu's doing, Majima hustles over to the Uematsu family office immediately, where he unexpectedly finds Uematsu slumped in his chair, having been shot in the head. After being accused of responsible for Uematsu's death by Ibuchi, Majima goes to the Millennium Tower to find a florist, the legendary informant in Kamurocho, in hopes of finding the murderer of Uematsu. Through the recorded video, he learns one of his men, Kawamura, was at the scene of the murder moments before he arrived. So Majima follows his trail to Sotambori, where he finds Kawamura at Cabaret Grant, who has killed an Omi Alliance officer. But before Kawamura can tell the truth, he is shot dead by Ibuchi, who reveals his whole plot at the end. Ibuchi has exploited Kawamura's dead to use him to get rid of Uematsu, which will also take down Majima as a consequence. Then he will grab the power of Dojo Clan before he hands it over to Omi Alliance, creating a unique Yakuza organization in Japan. After Majima defeats him, Ibuchi reveals that a war between Dojo Clan and Omi Alliance is inevitable and then commits suicide. In order to avoid the upcoming war, Majima and Terada meet the Omi Alliance leaders, coming to an agreement with them that Majima will disband his family as a gesture of apology for Kawamura's offense to Omi Alliance. Meanwhile, Dojo Clan's fourth chairman, Kazuma Kiryu, and his adopted daughter, Haruka Sawamura, are living together in Tokyo. When they visit the cemetery to pay respect to Haruka's mother, Yume, and Kiryu's foster father, Shintaro Kazama, they are visited by Kiryu's successor as chairman of Dojo Clan, Yukio Terada. Terada informs Kiryu that after the previous conflicts, the Dojo Clan is nearing collapse, and their rival organization from Osaka, the Omi Alliance, is preparing for war against them. Terada pleads for Kiryu to help him broker a peace with the Omi Alliance, which Kiryu initially refuses, as he wants a peaceful life. Some assassins sent by Omi Alliance ambush them and shoot Terada. Though Kiryu dispatches them all, he changes his mind when seeing Terada passing away in an ambulance. Then he meets the acting chairwoman of Dojo Clan, Yayoi Dojima, the wife of Sohei Dojima, Kiryu's deceased former boss, and asks her for permission to go to Osaka in order to make an oath on peace with Omi Alliance, fulfilling Terada's will. Yayoi agrees, despite of the objections from patriarchs of subsidiary families. Before he goes, Kiryu seeks a man whom he considers should be able to reconstruct the Dojo clan, Yayoi's son, Daigo Dojima, who is now living a decade in a life with his street gangsters after a five-year prison life. Kiryu rekindles his wish to return to Dojo clan by beating him up, and Daigo insists to accompany Kiryu to go to Osaka because his jail life was caused by Yuji Goda, the son of current chairman of Omi Alliance. Arriving in Osaka, Kiryu spends his first night alone at Grand Cabaret, where he meets another customer who gets furious when being called Dragon of Kansai. His henchman attacks Kiryu when Kiryu repeats it, but they are easily defeated. The man reveals himself as Luigi Goda, patriarch of Omi Alliance subsidiary family, Goryu clan. He boasts about his plan to take Tokyo for himself and become the unique dragon in Japan by detailing it to Kiryu that he has prepared a Dojo clan a firework in Kamurocho and then leaves. Stepping outside, Kiryu sees the news from the giant TV wall that an explosion just happens at Kamurocho, which originates from the Kazama family office in Millennium Tower. Meanwhile, local police officers Chief Tsutomo Beso and Detective Kairo Sayama are tasked with ensuring that no harm is done to Kiryu while he is in Osaka, 
since his death would guarantee an all-out war between Dojo Clan and Omi Alliance. The next day, Kiryu and Daigo travel to the Omi Alliance headquarters, where they meet with Luigi's adopted father, Chairman Jin Golder, who expresses his sorrow on Terada's death and states that this incident is not from his order, but from Goryeo Clan. Though the peace talks are initially successful, Luigi and his men burst in and stage a coup, overthrowing Luigi's father so that he can become the next chairman and launch the attack on Dojo Clan. Daigo tries to hinder Luigi, while Kiryu fights his way out to save Jin. But Daigo is not Luigi's match, and they are attacked by Luigi himself at the gate. Kiryu gains the upper hand after the tough fight, which Luigi does not want to give up. However, it's interrupted by the arrival of the police, led by Sayama, who arrests Kiryu and takes him away. While escorting Kiryu to safety, Sayama is shot by a sniper, forcing Kiryu to take her to a hideout in her adopted mother, Tamiyo's bar. Sayama gets treatment there, and she gives Kiryu the bullet hitting her, telling him to find an informant, Esaki, in a mahjong parlor. Esaki tells Kiryu that bullet is from Takashima, Omi Alliance second in command. When Kiryu is about to leave with the information, Esaki gets a call, stops Kiryu, and tells him that a bounty of 100 million yen has been put on his head. After Kiryu defeats them all, Esaki reveals that bounty is put by Sengoku, patriarch of Omi Alliance's wealthiest family. Having returned to Tamiyo's bar, Kiryu gets a call from police chief Bessel, who tells him that Daigo and Chairman Goda are abducted and urges him to go back to Tokyo as soon as possible. Sayama insists on going along with Kiryu as she can investigate further into Dojo Clan, behind which there seems to be a secret reason. Upon returning to Kamurocho, Kiryu takes an exalted Sayama to the now abandoned Serena bar and let her take her rest there. Sayama reveals to Kiryu that her parents were killed by Dojo Clan, and that's the reason why she insists on following him. Then Kiryu meets with the Dojo Clan leadership to inform them of what happened in Osaka. Fearing that a war with Omi Alliance may be inevitable, Kiryu proposes seeking assistance from Goro Majima. Kiryu finds him in Purgatory, the underground casino and a fighting arena, where Majima has formed his own company, Majima Construction. He refuses Kiryu's proposal to rejoin Dojo Clan at first, but eventually agrees to support Dojo Clan in the upcoming war with Omi Alliance, after Kiryu challenges and defeats him in a fight at the underground Coliseum. Detective Dato and his former partner, Kawara, are calling for a meeting with police chief, Kurahashi and Sudo, who informed them that bombing of Kazama family office was carried out by a known foreign criminal organization tied to the Goryeo clan, and that the only lead in the case is Kazuki, the owner of the Stardust host club. When Kawara and Dato go to Stardust to give Kazuki an interview about the case, he flees from the site. Meanwhile, Kiryu and Sayama receive word that Daigo and Jin Goda have been kidnapped by an unknown third party. They track down kidnappers to an abandoned building, where Kiryu has to find his way through numerous Korean gangsters. Atop the building, they find Date, Kawara, and two Kazukis. It turns out that a Korean imposter had kidnapped the real Kazuki and had been impersonating for months to secretly conduct his plot in Kamurocho. In the ensuing confrontation, Kawara reveals the imposter by his instinct but Dati's interruption makes him and a real Kazuki shot. The imposter evades Dati's bullet, but is killed by Sayama from behind. Then the injured Kazuki and Kawara are carried to a nearby clinic. The clinic is soon raided by two Korean thugs, and after they confirm that Kazuki who survived is not their accomplice, they punch Sayama to the ground while being questioned by her. However, Kiryu managed to subdue them both, and by interrogating one of them, Kawara reveals their identity members of Jingo Mafia. Seeking to know more about where Jingo could have taken Jin and Daigo, Kiryu seeks his old ally, the florist, who has moved to the Millennium Tower to work for the Dojo Police Department. He uses his surveillance network to find out Daigo is being kept in the ruins of the old Shangri-La soap land. Kiryu and Sayama rush over there and rescue him, but find that Jin has been taken elsewhere. The arriving Kashiwaji reveals the vendetta between Dojo Clan and the Jingo Mafia. In the late 70s, Sohei Dojima used the opportunity that Jingo's leaders would be having a party in one of their warehouses, sending his two officers, Kazab and Shimano, to take out most of the Jingo's leaders. Afterwards, the Dojo clan won the district of Kamurocho and became the most powerful Yakuza in Kanto. Kiryu heads to Dojo clan headquarters to attend Terada's funeral, 
The ceremony is interrupted by Luigi's showing up, demanding to be allowed to pay respect to Terada, who used to be a member of Omi Alliance. Despite trying to bribe his way into the procession, Luigi is turned down at the door. After which, he gives the Dojo Clan a mourning period of three days before the Gaudio Clan attacks the city. However, on that same night, Sengoku launches an attack on Tokyo. He sends bunches of hitmen to assassinate officers of Dojo Clan, and at the same time, an army of his men descend on Kamurocho to take control of the most profitable district. But they are repelled by Goro Majima. When Kiryu finds a wounded Majima in Kamurocho, he is warned to rush back to Dojo headquarters because he is being attacked by Nishikiyama family, whose patriarch Shindo has betrayed the Dojo, joining forces with Sengoku. Shindo takes the Dojo clan leadership hostage and forces Yayoi to be his woman, hoping to seize the chairmanship for himself. When Kiryu appears to be his only obstacle, he engages into a fight with him. The coup ultimately fails as Kiryu defeats the traitor, and Shindo is killed by Daigo. By looking into the archived files, Dati discovers that the case of Jingo Mafia's Masak was taken by Kawaru and Besho, Sayama's supervisor. So Sayama decides to return to Osaka to question his boss. In Osaka, Besho admits his involvement in the case and reveals that there were three survivors from Jingo Mafia, one of which he has taken to Osaka as well, and his name is Murai. The duo finds Jingo's survivor Murai, whose real name was Hojong Park, at a Soji Parlor in Sotembury. After being questioned, the former gangster reveals that along with him, two of the Jingo boss's bodyguards survived, Daijin Kim and Yomin Ji, who must now be leading a new Jingo in their pursuit of vengeance against the dojo. He also reveals that the boss's only child was helped escape by a police detective. Mirai's story is interrupted by the arrival of a group of Jingo assassins. The duo defeat assassins, but not before they manage to kill Murai. Before Kiryu can question them, they all consume cyanide capsule and kill themselves. Sayama believes herself to be the child who survived the massacre, as her parents were killed by Dojo Clan at the same time and place. A distraught Kiryu confesses to her that he was present at the massacre back when he was 12 years old, and that he accidentally caused the death of Jingo Boss, who may have been her father. He offered to let Sayama kill him in vengeance, but an angry Sayama states that killing him will solve nothing before departing. Left alone, Kiryu is attacked by a hitman, and he manages to make his way to the bar of Tamiyo, who saves him. And afterwards, Kiryu learns that Sengoku has kidnapped his adopted daughter, Haruka. Kiryu breaks into Sengoku's mansion, which is located in Osaka Castle, and fights his way past the Sengoku's personal guard of ninjas and samurais, eventually coming up to the place where he's holding Haruka hostage. Sengoku unleashes his pet tigers on Kiryu, but much to his horror, Kiryu defeats the beasts. Then he flees to his office, but finds Luji lying in wait for him there. Disgusted by Sengoku's underhanded ways, Luji kills him with his katana and throws his body out of the castle. Then warning Kiryu that his attack on Kamurocho will be launched in two days. Kiryu leaves with Haruka and reunites with Sayama. They receive startling news from back in Tokyo. It turns out that Karahashi, Dati's boss in Tokyo Police Department has been working with Jingo the whole time. His real name is Yomin Ji, one of the survivors of Masak. He demands that Kiryu meet him at Millennium Tower. The duo rush back to Tokyo, and together with Kawara, confront Ji there. Then a battle ensues. Ultimately, Sayama kills Ji, but not before Kawara suffers a fatal wound while trying to protect her. With his dying breath, Kawara reveals that he is Sayama's real father and her mother is Su Yun, Jingo leader's wife, saved by Kawara at the day of Masak. She gave up her first child, and gave birth to Sayama when living together with Kawara before she was eventually killed by Jingo Mafia. After that, Kawara gave Sayama to her adopted mother for avoiding Jingo's killing. After mourning Kawara, Sayama heads back to Osaka office to decode various files found in Ji's office. Meanwhile, Bad news arises when Kazuki awakens in the clinic and reveals that while he was held captive by Jingo, he overheard that Koreans intend to detonate bombs all over Kamurocho when Goryeo clan invades. The following night, the Goryeo clan mobilize against Tokyo and all hell breaks loose. When Majima and his crew are busy disabling all the bombs, Daigo leads the remaining Dojo clan's forces to do the fighting. After Kiryu defeats Luigi's goons at Stardust Club, 
Both clans have huge losses. Liu Ji spares an exhausted Kiryu and schedules a face-off one-on-one the next day on Kamurocho Hill to decide who is the real dragon of Japan. Sayama returns from Osaka, begging Kiryu not to fight Liu Ji, but Kiryu refuses. Then she tells Kiryu to go to Tokyo Police Department to meet his boss, Besho. However, when there, Kiryu finds no one but a recorded video by Sayama, which reveals the critical information she has found in Ji's files. Ryuji is Suyun's abandoned child, so Sayama is his half-sister. She cannot allow Kiryu and Ryuji to fight each other to death, and will go to meet Ryuji instead, in order to talk him down from continuing his war on Tokyo. Fearing for Sayama's safety, Kiryu rushes to Kamurocho Hills by battling a group of Jingo assassins sent after him. At the top of Kamurocho Hills, he finds Sayama, Ryuji, and Jin Goda. Ryuji is shocked to discover the truth about his parentage. But neither Sayama nor Jin Goder can convince him to give up. Then Kiryu and Ryuji face off in a one-on-one -on -one fight, where both are severely injured. However, just as the fight seems over, a group of Jingo troops arrives, led by none other than Yukio Terada himself, who reveals that he is Daijin Kim, the final survivor of Jingo Masak, and who's been leading Jingo Mafia the whole time. He faked his death at the hands of Goryeo clan in order to provoke a war, which he believes would result in the Dojo clan's destruction and thus fulfill his mission of revenge. Now Kim decides to kill Kiryu personally, and then use the remaining Jingo troops to entirely destroy Dojo clan. Though wounded, Kiryu and Sayama take on Kim and his troops, defeating them at last. But the fight is interrupted by the unexpected arrival of Omiyaran's leader, Takashima, who has been working with Kim. Taking advantage of how battered everyone is from the preceding series of fights, Takashima attempts to murder everyone present, so he can take control of the whole thing. He fatally shoots both Jin Goda and Kim, but before he can execute the rest, Kim activates a final bomb on Kamurocho Hill, which has a timer too short for any of them to get out of the building before it detonates. This distracts Takashima long enough for Sayama to attempt to subdue him with a baton, but she fails, and is grabbed by him instead. When he is about to execute Sayama, Ryuji gets up from the ground with a gun, shooting Takashima numerous times, killing him while sustaining several wounds himself in the process. Since the bomb's detonation looms, and both are too injured to even attempt to escape, Ryuji and Kiryu decide to continue the fight before dying. Sayama tries to stop them, but is locked in a cargo elevator, sending her to the bottom. The battle is arduous and brutal, but Kiryu ultimately wins. With only minutes to go, a return of Sayama comforts a remorseful Luji as he dies in her arms. Accepting their impending death, Kiryu and Sayama kiss just as the bomb ticks down. Fortunately, the bomb never detonates, as Kim has lost his fuse when defeated. Kiryu and Sayama survive, living together in Tokyo along with Haruka. <laughs>